Hello everyone, welcome back to another measurement lesson. Today we're going to be looking at a broad range of measurement problems and how they could appear in your exams. Let's have a look at our concept map for today. Cool guys, so first things first, I'm going to remind you what a polyhedron is. I'm then going to revise the definitions of surface area and volume and then I'm going to actually define the surface area and volume of a hemisphere. After that, we're going to look into some examples which involve combined shapes. Let's go to the first definition. So a polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure with four or more flat surfaces. So at this point, I'm just going to pause. Just a reminder, a polyhedron is an actual three-dimensional shape. It's a shape that I could possibly hold. So it could be a spherical ball, it could be a box of chocolates. It's not two-dimensional, because two-dimensional refers to a shape that could be drawn on a flat surface. So if I were to draw a triangle on a piece of paper, that would be a two-dimensional triangle. Cool, let's go to the next definition. So the surface area can be defined or explained as the total surface area of a polyhedron, and we know that a polyhedron is a three-dimensional shape, can be found by adding together the areas of each face of a polyhedron together. So everyone, the surface area has got to do with the area that the three-dimensional figure has on its outer surface. So if I had a cube and I wanted the surface area of the cube, I know that the exterior of a cube is made up of six external squares. So if I were to find the surface area of a cube, I would have to find the area of all six squares and add them together because that will be the total surface area of that cube. Let's go to the next slide. So volume, the volume of a three-dimensional shape refers to the capacity that the shape has. The volume of a three-dimensional shape is determined by working out the area of the base of the object and then it is multiplied by the perpendicular height. If you've tuned in before, you know I've always made a fuss about the fact that we have to multiply the base by the perpendicular height. So the height that involves a right angle because that will give me an indication of the capacity of the polyhedron. Great, let's go to the next slide. Another thing that comes into play in measurement is scale factors. So for scale fa factors, we can say that it is possible that the dimensions of a prism are changed by a certain factor. The number that each dimension is multiplied by is known as the scale factor. Often we refer to the scale factor as a scale factor of k. Continuing on that note about scale factors, in general, if the dimensions of a regular polyhedron are changed by a factor of k, then please note that the surface area is changed by k squared and the volume is changed by k cubed. So please note there are some exceptions to this trend, so there are some cases where it won't be the surface area multiplied by k squared and the volume by k cubed, but in general, when I've changed my dimensions by a scale factor of k, the surface area changes by k squared and the volume by k cubed. Cool, just some advice for problems involving combined shapes. For measurement problems, it is crucial to consider the words of the question carefully because often hidden clues how to solve my problem are involved in how my question is phrased. Also just want to say, please pay special attention to any indication that any shapes, surface areas or volumes that have been removed from the whole. So for instance, if you have a box, but I've told you that I've taken the top of the box off, that would have an impact on the surface area. So please just be aware of what's included and what is not included. Lastly, it is very important to visualize the problem. So most measurement examples are based on real life scenarios. 
So it can almost help to visually picture in our brains how this problem has come about, because that could give us some indication on how to solve it. Great, everyone. I hope that you're with me so far. All that I've done up till this point is just revise some important measurement concepts that can help me solve problems. Let's go to the next slide. So we are now going to define the surface area of a hemisphere. So we can see that a hemisphere is half of a sphere. But if I'm thinking about the surface area of it, it's going to be half the surface area of a sphere because I can see it's half of a sphere. But I also have to account for the fact that I'm adding the area of one circle as well. So the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And then I also am adding the area of this top circle. And I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So half times 4 pi r squared gives me 2 pi r squared. And I'm adding this to pi r squared. So I can simplify and say that the surface area of a hemisphere is equal to 3 pi r squared. Great. Now let us define the volume of a hemisphere. So the volume, I don't know why there's an area there, so the volume of a hemisphere is going to be equal to a half times the volume of a sphere. Because if a sphere has a certain capacity, and I'm now taking a hemisphere, that is half of the capacity of the sphere. So it's going to be a half times the volume of a sphere. And I know that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So if I want to simplify this, I can cross cancel my 2s. So the volume of a hemisphere will be 2 thirds pi r cubed. Great, so I'm quickly going to show you an example of how this can apply. So if we are given the following hemisphere with a diameter of 11 centimeters, we can determine the surface area of the hemisphere and we can determine the volume of the hemisphere. Great, so let us do A. So we are first going to be calculating the surface area of this hemisphere. Please note that I've given you the diameter as 11 centimeters, but my formula calls for the radius. So that means that my radius will have to be half of my diameter, which is going to be 5 comma 5 centimeters. So at this point, I can fill it into my formula because it's going to be 3 pi times 5 comma 5 squared. So let's pop this into my calculator. 3 pi times 5 comma 5 squared. So the surface area is going to be 285, and I can see if I round off to the de second decimal place, it's actually going to become 285 comma 1. Comma 1 centimeters squared. It remains squared because it is surface area. Now let's do the volume. Again, just a reminder, we've said that the radius will be 5 comma 5 centimeters because I have halved my diameter. So now I can fill it into the volume formula. So it's going to be 2 thirds pi times my radius cubed. It's cubed, but now because we're working with volume. So let's just plug this all in. We've got 2 over 3 multiplied by pi times my radius cubed, which is going to give me 348,45. And this will be in terms of centimeters cubed as it is a volume. Great, everyone. I hope that you're with me so far. After the break, we're going to look at some more examples. See you soon.